All right, so with the uh, inversion R, you're gonna get a number of parts. You're gonna start with the middle plate, then you have the skid plate, which is the bottom of the, the quad, and then you have the top plate. You'll come down and you'll have your five millimeter thick front arms. Uh, you'll have two of those. You'll also have two of the rear arms and five mil. Now, uh, we'll go over it a little bit later, but the rear arms can also be used uh, in the front, which will change the quad from a 249 millimeters to 227 millimeters. So if you're trying to fit into a smaller race class, you can do that, and we'll go over that later. Uh, you'll also get your camera plate. You'll get the hardware for the arms, which is going to be a M3 16 mil with some three millimeter spacers, uh, some nylon lock nuts for those. These are gonna be for your motor screws. I usually use two per motor. It's plenty of strength for that as long as you use some blue Loctite. Then you also have your frame hardware here. You're also gonna have some hardware for your flight controller, your power distribution board. And then the metal hardware is gonna be for your uh, FPV camera. You're gonna have your 3D printed uh, bumpers, an XT60 for your power, obviously the cables for it. These are going to be the hardware for the bumpers. And then you also have two sets of JSTs for the LEDs. The Inversion R comes with red LEDs in the rear with the white LEDs up in the front. And then obviously you have your GoPro Mobius mount. So whichever one you're going to be using, you can utilize that ramp for both the Mobius and the GoPro. The tools that we're going to use is a two millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, I have a pair of tweezers here. I also have a small wrench that I like to use for the small nuts. It's a 730 seconds. It's a little big, but it, it works since we're not torquing them down too much. Uh, if you don't have this wrench or some needle nose pliers or something, you can use a set of, of wire clippers or something to help get the small places where the, where the spacers need to be. So what I like to start with is taking the middle plate first off and get in your hardware for the power distribution board and the flight controller. If you forget to put these on at the beginning, you're taking everything back apart to put them on later. So I just grab one and I just hold them on with the, the plastic nuts. Um, these Putting the plastic nuts on here to hold these screws kind of serves two purposes. One, it holds the screws in place while you're working with it, but it also, once you put your power distribution board on, it keeps the power distribution board off of the, the middle plate there so you don't have to worry about it arcing. Um, so we'll just go ahead and put all four of these in. All right, so once you've got all your ESCs laid out where you want them to be on the skid plate, you can move back over to the main plate and we wanna stick all six of our standoffs. So you wanna get your standoffs, get one of the M3 six millimeter bolts, there's going to be six spots for it. Obviously the front corners get it. If you do forget to put the standoffs on, you will still be able to get to them uh, afterwards, but it won't be the easiest. So I always just take the, the extra time and do them right now. So that's the front four there. You'll, you'll notice that there is two sets of holes right next to each other, but the front holes here are gonna be for your front bumper of your LEDs. So don't mix that up for your standoffs or they're not gonna be lined up properly. All right, so once you've got all six of your standoffs on, you're gonna go ahead and put the middle plate down, get your skid plate again, and you're gonna to wanna to do your rear LED bumper. Uh, you have to do this one now or else you won't be able to do it later. So you're gonna take your back bumper, you're gonna take the side that has the one millimeter of, of overhang, that's gonna go down. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take another one of these M3 eight millimeter bolts, and you're gonna stick it through the, through the holder of the uh, bumper on each side. And this is what's gonna hold your LED bumper on. 
and then you can put your lock nuts on there. Again, if you skip this step, you're not going to be able to do it later. Uh, you'll have to come up with another way of, of holding on your, your LED bumper. Again, Loctite's not necessary here since we're using lock nuts. Um, I would also take this time to possibly feed your LED wires. Uh, these are going to go on here. Another thing that I would recommend you doing is, is taking some super glue and super gluing these LEDs on. Uh, they will get really hot. They're a very, very bright LED. And also you're going to want to um, run your, your JST wherever it's going to need to be so that you can have it connected, or excuse me, I would go this way off of your power distribution board and then you can have the other end of your JST plug into it. Um, once that's all done, your ESCs are going to be in place, your bumper's in place. Now you're going to move on to putting the two plates together with the arms uh, with it. All right, so we just got our LED bumper on, uh, the rear bumper. The front bumper we can do later. Uh, we also have our middle plate with our um, plastic hardware for our PDB and our flight control board. And also we've got our six standoffs on. Uh, from this point, you can go ahead and move on to your arms. Now, of course, your arms are going to go on uh, forward facing. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier in the video. You have the option of running a 249 millimeter motor to motor quad with the configuration being in this manner, or you can run it with the extra set of rear arms, which you can purchase from the site. You can use those in a configuration like this. Now the quad is going to be 227 millimeters. So if you are racing in a, a, a smaller class, if there's a super mini class and it's a 230 or under, then you can run in that class with the same frame. Uh, you'll only be you'll be restricted to a five inch prop though in this configuration versus when you're in the full configuration you'll be able to swing a full six inch prop with 249 millimeter frame. Um, so now that you've got all that done you'll decide which arms you're going to be running. I always start with my my middle plate. Take one of your 16 millimeter bolts put it through and then you're going to take your arm uh, and hold it on there. Now I'm not going to beat around the bush. This can get pretty difficult once you have your ESCs and you're going to be hoping that you have a third or fourth hand but it, the, the benefit of this later is going to pay off. So once you've got that on you're going to take your three millimeter spacer, slide on that bolt. Obviously it's not going to stay there so you're going to have to you're going to have to hold it there. Uh, take your your uh, skid plate and then you're going to attach the two. Obviously your ESCs are going to be in here as well. So about this time also you're going to start wanting to focus on getting your your power wires for your ESCs through, um, start getting your motor wires through, your server leads for your uh, your ESCs and whatnot. So once you have that there you'll take one of your your nylon lock nuts to hold this, this arm on. Um, uh, once you've got that one on, you just can go ahead and move on to the next one. The Stick that one through. Now this is where it's going to be beneficial for you to have a pair of uh, tweezers or a needle nose. Um, what I like to do is just kind of grip it in here. Um, just kind of slide it through and kind of set it on this, the bolt there. And then you'll be able to get it through um, the, the skid plate there. And stick your next nylon nut on there. Uh, like the other nuts we're using, we're using lock nuts so it's not really necessary to use Loctite at, at this juncture. You would just be, you would just be wasting your time. And then your last, your last bolt for this arm will go on. And grab your spacer with your pair of pliers or a set of tweezers. And once that's through, you can grab your lock nut and stick it on there. I haven't tweaked any of these down yet. I'll do that at the end once I've got everything set. This gives you a little bit of play just to kind of move things around as you as you need to. Um, from here, you can move on to your back arm. The back arm is going to be swept down in a way. Uh, if you put it this way, um, the bolts won't line up for one. And if they did line up, you would lose space from your propeller. So everything gets swept forward, 
and everything gets swept backwards. So uh, then you want to move on to these rear arms. Grab the same 16 millimeter bolt, find your hole here. And then once that's on there, you can grab your, your three millimeter spacer, stick it on there. And then you can grab your lock washer. Now at this point you'll find that if you didn't put your rear bumper on right, if you didn't have the one millimeter spacer here, you won't even be able to get this arm on. Um, there's a support beam that is on the rear bumper here that will block the arm from being able to go on. So if you can't get the arm on or lined up with these holes, it's most likely because you have this rear bumper on incorrectly. It needs to be flipped around, which is going to require you to disassemble the bottom skid plate to, to get to it. Um, from there, you go ahead and get your uh, another bolt and just work your way around until you get all these until you get all these on. Oh, that one flew away. A little dark in this one. All right, so once we've got the arms on, I've got them tightened down now so they're not going to move anywhere and you'll notice that they're quite solid being five millimeter thick uh, solid 3k twill arms. I've got all the lock nuts down and tightened. Again, you don't need to use Loctite on those because of the, the locking, uh, the nylon lock in there. Um, the one thing I didn't mention earlier is these standoffs. You can go ahead and use some blue Loctite on those so that they don't back off. Um, I've never had a problem with it, but some guys do, so use some blue Loctite there. Don't use the red. Stay away from it, and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, from here, you want to get your front bumper. Uh, again, with the front bumper, it has to go on a certain way. The ledge of this one is going to be down. Uh, it won't fit on the frame properly if you have it upside down. Uh, so if you do have it upside down, you'll notice that it's going gonna, it's gonna to push these two frames together for you to even be able to fit it in there so you know it's automatically wrong. Um, so make sure the flush side is up and it should just slide right in there. Um, the holes might be a little bit tight but it's just plastic so you should be able to get your your 16 millimeter M3 screw through there. Once you've got it set you can take your two millimeter Allen wrench and uh, twist that that bolt all the way down and through there. Um, Put it down on the table here. Like I said, it's plastic, so it'll it'll sort of thread itself and kind of get it lined up while you're you're putting it through. And that should come out the other side, where you can put the other nylon. Uh, lock nut on. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And line that line that hole up. Alright, so once you've got the front bumper on, uh, you can move on to doing your PDB, your flight controller, and then also your camera. Uh, when you were doing the bottom plate, you should have been feeding through all of your power lines and things like that. If you're using our mini power distribution board, then at this point you can put, that, put this on and then feed all of your um, power line, power wires for your ESCs through it. Uh, so that'll just go on there. Uh, you'll use the nylon spacers here, and, and this will keep the Ninja 32 board from touching the power distribution board. Now, with the Ninja uh, 32, you'll want to do a bottom mount with the uh, 
transmit and receive connections if you want. Uh, the really important part of when you're soldering this board is the motor pins. The motor pins are going to have to be inward like this or they're going to have to be straight up. The reason for this is because of the, the clearance of your six inch propellers, if they're sticking out the side, you're going to have that big wire harness sticking out with your servo leads and they're going to get whacked by the, the propeller. So you need to make sure that these are going to be the straight pins or that you have them in here at an angle uh, as I have here. You do it this way, you can then clock your board. Obviously the board would normally be this way. I normally clock mine 90 degrees in uh, counterclockwise and then I place it down and then use your nylon nuts to, to secure it. Obviously at this point you would also be feeding your other wires on and connecting everything to, to hold it on. I'm just going to stick two nuts on here just to hold this on and then we can move on to putting the camera plate on. The, um, the camera plate is obviously going to have the four corners for your, for your camera. How I like to do this is I like to use the longer of the uh, hardware for the top and then I use the shorter ones for the bottom and this allows me to angle my camera upright so in the end what you're going to get is something like this so at 90 degrees you'll see that I get that that camera tilt in there um, by using it in this manner uh, sometimes you can't get enough tilt some guys like at a, a very extreme angle uh, and that's where one of the really neat designs of our inversion frame is. Once you get the camera plate in place, you'll have two options on our top plate where you want to put the camera. You can use the front holes and that'll keep it at a, a perfect 90 degrees or you can set it here which will give you about another 10 degrees on there. Uh, how you would do that is you would set your, your plate where you want it. So in this configuration we're going to use the back ones. Let me get this on here. So you'll set it in the back and then you're going to want to slide this back to get to your, your holes to where they're going to line up and you'll notice that it takes that plate with it and it gives you even more of an angle for your camera. Uh, if you want to use the front mount then you can just do it in a traditional manner, keep it in the front and you'll have your just your, your 90 degrees with whatever you built in with your hardware. But again, uh, to get that, the back ones to work you want to place it forward, keep it at 90 degrees, lock it into your to the back the back mounts and then slide this top plate back till you find your alignment of the of the holes the you'll notice that on the top plate you'll have it it looks like it's a slider this isn't utilized on the inversion R and this is something that the DX model utilizes more so than the R um, but again you use those back holes and you're gonna have yourself a, a, a built-in camera tilt or even a more extreme uh, camera tilt. Uh, once that top plate's in position, you'll also want to get some more of your blue Loctite and um, use some blue Loctite on these. Get, get it lined up and then you can secure that, that top plate down. So now that we've got the top plate on, the inversion R is pretty much together. Obviously we don't have any of the electronic components or the FPV gear on here. Uh, with that on there it would change it a little bit. Uh, a couple of things that you have to keep in mind is this is a very, very tight frame. Uh, the purpose of this frame was to meet uh, aerial, aerial GP's uh, class for their, their minis is 250 millimeters or smaller. This is 250 millimeters. It's actually 249.94 millimeters motor to motor and you can fit a six inch prop on this frame. The thing to keep in mind though is that the position of the props in the rear are going to cut really close to this area here where your velcro strap is going to be. I like to use a, a wrap strap here. It's a little bit thinner than a velcro strap. Uh, you can get those also from the site again. We use those on everything that, that we use. We don't use zip ties. The wrap straps are a little bit uh, more forgiving on the electronic components. Um, but what you want to do is when you're using your your battery, this is a three cell, so it's it's going to be a little bit different. But this is one of our U bad 1300 milliamp hour three cells. Um, traditionally, people like to put their batteries 
this way uh, so that th they're flat this way. You're not going to be able to run the battery this way, not our three cell or our four cell. You need to put the battery upright. Uh, if you do this, this, this makes it a little bit more slender and you're going to be able to fit those six inch props without any problems with the hitting the Velcro or, or the wrap straps. Uh, again, if you have it this way, you're going to come into a uh, possibility of hitting your cells. Um, the other neat thing about our UBAD batteries is the, the, there's an aluminum plate here and also on the, the back side. So when you do have it right here, if you do get a prop strike in a crash or anything like that, you're not going to cut a cell. That aluminum plate's going to protect your battery in a crash uh, that might do that. Um, from there, again, you, if you're trying to fit into even a smaller race class, then by utilizing these rear arms in the front, then you're going to be able to fit it into a, a 230 millimeter class if there is one in the future. Um, it's actually 227 millimeters from motor to motor if you're using the rear arms in the front. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much the uh, ins and outs of the Inversion R. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send us a, an email at info at ubuyadrone.com. We'll also have some links down on the webpage or of this video uh, that will take you to the webpage where you can purchase this and uh, where you can uh, email us if you have any questions about the build or, or how you can acquire one for yourself. All right. All right, so the one thing I didn't go over because this is just an, uh, an added feature. Again, this is a uh, race frame. It's not really made for videography or, or anything like that. So the importance of having a, a stabilization or vibration dampening for your camera wasn't ever in mind when we built the frame or designed it. Um, the one thing that we do include, though, is a 15-degree ramp for your Mobius or your GoPro like we talked about at the beginning of the video. Uh, what you would do to mount it is you would remove these four standoff screws. It would go here and then you would screw it in and it would be hard mounted to there. Um, if you wanted to use your Mobius, then obviously it will fit the Mobius on. You can use some of our wrap straps to hold it on into place uh, by going in through it in, in this way. And then you could use your wrap strap to hold the Mobius on. Uh, if you want to use a GoPro, the ramp can also be utilized for a GoPro. These two stoppers here are to keep the GoPro from sliding down the ramp, just like that. And then again, you can just use your, your wrap strap or a Velcro strap. You can feed it through this front hole. See if we can get it through here. There's, a, there's another slit in the middle of the ramp. Obviously, the first time you're going to do this, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than, than future times. You can use your tweezers and just get it up and through here. Now, this will be in this, this way. You can put your, your GoPro down and then you can strap it down here and then you can also strap it around uh, this way so that then you've got it secured and then that's how you can you can still get your your recording done with the inversion R again there's not going to be any vibration dampening or or isolation from from the frame so if you are running a six inch prop you might need to balance them if you want to get that jello out but again it's a race frame it's not really made for or designed with the uh, vibration dampening or anything like that in mind so that's the uh, that's your ramp